Hi, so this is the 100% test for atomic structure and periodic table, or it could be just a fact test. Right, so the first one is, what is an element, a compound, and a mixture? An element is one type of atom. Okay, so potassium, sodium, chlorine. A compound is a substance made of two or more atoms but the key to this is the fact that they are chemically combined okay it's a bit like two people right what they got is got super glue on their hands so they get chemically combined together a mixture is two or more substances not chemically combined okay so that's like you've got students in a room so what you've got is you've got boys and girls males and females in a room and what they are is just a mixture and what they can do is I could say boys over there girls over there because they're not chemically combined electron shells maximum number of shells two eight eight now for the purpose that you're only ever going to have to draw the maximum of calcium is the most in calcium is two Right, but actually the maximum you can have in the first shell or the fourth shell rather is 18. All right. Complete the table. Name of the particle is a proton. It is an electron. It is a neutron. Pen. P E N. Right. So if I say draw a pen, right, what you do is you write down the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in something. Relative charge, proton plus, proton plus. Electron, minus one. Neutron, neutral, no charge. Relative mass, proton is one. Neutron is one. See how they went top of the one? Because they're the same. Protons is a one and neutrons is a one. So relatively, they weigh the same. An electron can be tiny, zero, Sometimes you might even see negligible. Question number four. What is the name of the larger number and what does it tell us? And what is the name of the smaller number and what does it tell us? So there's the big number, there's the small number. The large number's name is the mass number. And that tells us the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. Okay, so the big number up there, so that is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. The smaller number is the atomic number. And that is the number of protons or the number of electrons. So from this one here, we've got lithium, the atomic number, the number at the bottom, it's got three protons and it's got three electrons. And because it's got three protons, three plus the number of neutrons equals seven, which is the number at the top, the number of neutrons is four. Okay, question number five, right? This is then some sort of wording terminology, right? What is a solvent solution, uh, so solute and a solution? Right, they all sound kind of very, very similar. So the solvent is the liquid, the solute dissolves in. Okay, kind of that's like the base product. Okay, so the, so the solvent uh, could be water. All right, the solute is the substance being dissolved okay so if you were making beer what you've got is the solvent right it's probably water right and then the solute the substance being dissolved could be the alcohol and the solution itself is the mixture of the solvent and the solute okay Separation techniques. Again, huge thing that is on exams. All right.
right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one. Okay, I'm not going to show you diagrams and things like that because that is then things that you, you should be knowing anyway. The first one is distillation. Okay, sometimes it can be put down as simple distillation. The second one is evaporation. Then we've got crystallization. We've then got chromatography. And we've got filtration. Okay, they're the five methods. Descriptions. So what is simple distillation? Simple distillation is where two liquids with different boiling points are separated. Okay, so an example of that is water and alcohol, or water and ethanol. Water has a boiling point of 100, ethanol has a boiling point of 80. So therefore, when you're actually distilling it, what happens is the ethanol boils off first because it's got a lower boiling point. Evaporation. Okay, so what evaporation does is it removes the solvent from a solution leaving the solute. Now that sounds really complicated, right? So basically what you've got to do is you've got to remember uh, that what I might do is I might have uh, water and copper sulfate. So water is obviously a liquid, copper sulfate is dissolved in it. So when I evaporate it, what happens is the solvent, right, which is the liquid, right, is taken away, leaving the solute, which is the thing that then is dissolved in it. So water is the solvent and copper sulfate which is the blue stuff is the solute is what is dissolved in it crystallization this is then where you produce solid crystals from a solution oops from a solution by evaporating. Okay, and it's basically very similar to the previous one, and that is then a good example is water and copper sulfate. Chromatography is then the paper one. Alright, this is then where we do separate mixtures. Good one of that is food colouring, right? Because food colouring will have numbers, numerous different colours within it, right? It's like black ink. Black ink has loads of different colours in it, right? What will happen is uh, they will move up the paper at different rates depending on their solubility. Filtration is separate insoluble solids from a solution. Right. So what we've got there is we've got sand and we've got water. Right. So what you do, you put them in a filter paper, right. the sand stays in the filter paper, obviously, and the water goes through. Number seven, what is an isotope? Right. It is the same element, but with different neutrons. Okay. So for an example of that could be, if I've got hydrogen, which is like that, an isotope of hydrogen could be like that, which has then got an extra neutron. Now, Rutherford comes up loads in different places all over the place. So there is a bit of repetition to do with uh, Rutherford, but he does come up on exams a lot. What were three Rutherford's three observations? Firstly, the alpha particles, I'll just put down the alpha particle, passes straight through. What that does is it tells us there's empty, empty space. They're also scattered. 
And what that means is, that means there is a positive nucleus, right? Because the alpha particles are positive, so when the alpha particles come near the positive nucleus, they kind of change direction a little bit and they scatter around. The other one is deflected. When they're deflected, that means they come straight back, and that is because there is a solid center. So what they do is they go shooting in, right, hit something, and they bounce back. Okay, now this is then, Rutherford comes on here again, right, but these are then the six main people, right, that discovered and made suggestions about the atom. The very, very first guy, he said atomos, right, you can see where the word atom comes from. And what that means is, it means cannot be cut. That's Democritus. John Dalton, he came up with the idea that it was a solid sphere. J.J. Thompson, right, he's a good guy, right, he came up with the plum pudding model. Okay, and what that means is, it means he thought it was a ball, Right, and the ball was generally positively charged, but embedded in it was like minus negatives. So then the sort of the doughy bit of the plum pudding, sometimes you call it a chocolate chip cookie, right, where the actual cookie bit is positive and the chocolate chips are then negative. Rutherford, I'm just going to write down his um, observations, or his conclusions rather. I'm going to write down an atom, it's mostly empty space. It has a positive center and it has a solid center. Bohr, Bohr, however you want to pronounce it, B O H R, right? What he then did is he came up with a proposal that electrons are in shells. Chadwick, the last guy. He came up with a principle that neutrons are in the nucleus. Question number 10. Right, this is then a comparison between Mendeleev's, Mendeleev's periodic table and the modern version. Mendeleev here, modern here. Mendeleev ordered um, the elements on this periodic table by the atomic weight. The modern period of periodic table goes by the atomic number. Gaps. Mendeleev was dead smart and what he did is he left gaps, right? Because what he did, he predicted that some elements didn't exist. The modern periodic table, there's no gaps present because what we think is we've discovered everything now. The number of elements, he had approximately 63. We have now got more than 100, right? And there's new elements that are kind of being created, right, even now. The transition metals, that big group in the middle, he didn't have them separate. He kind of included them all in his uh, periodic table, which is kind of why his was sort of like a rectangle. Ours, or the modern one, is now in a separate block. It's that big kind of flat section in the middle of the periodic table. Noble gases, not present. For us, they've got their own group, right? Because basically he hadn't discovered the noble gases. Because they're so unreactive, they're very difficult to find. Okay. Question number 11. Why does reactivity increase down group one metals? Right, so if you think about it, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium. Okay, why does reactivity increase down group one metals? All right, now they're more reactive, and it's also to do with it's easier to lose electrons down the group. Okay, so basically rubidium can lose an electron easier than lithium. It's all to do with the size increases down. Oops, small, big. There is more shielding down. And 
what shielding means is other electrons in the way. Number four is there is less attraction. Okay? So that is then the attraction between the centre of the atom all right, and the electrons um, around the outside. Question number 12. Why does reactivity decrease? All right, so look at this. Increase, decrease. So what we've got here is we've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. All right, and what fluorine wants to do, it wants to gain one electron. Chlorine wants to gain one electron, bromine does, iodine does. So rather than losing the electrons here, these then want to gain. So as you go down the group, it's harder to gain an electron. And that is because the size increases. So it's harder for this to gain an electron than that one because it's bigger. There is more shielding and there is less attraction. Right. 13. Right. List four properties of metals and non-metals. Metals create a positive ion. Now whether that's a property or not, but it's kind of like a bit of a fact about it. These form a negative ion. Iron. So non metals form a negative ion. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. Non metals are insulators, right? So basically, they don't allow uh, electricity and heat to pass particularly very easy at all. Metals have a high melting, God, I shouldn't be lazy, melting point and boiling point. Non-metals have a low melting point and boiling point. Right? So that basically means to say that a lot of non-metals are gases because they've got a very low boiling point. And the last one is then they can be malleable or ductile and non-metals tend to be very brittle, okay, so they'll snap very easily. Question number 14, alright, so what we've got then is we've got the halogens, alright, so the halogens are uh, fluorines, chlorines and bromines again. Right? And what we're looking at here is we're looking at three main properties of the halogens. Firstly, they are always pairs of atoms. Now what that means is Cl2, F2. They come in twos. They also have three main properties of halogens. is the melting and boiling points increase down the group and also another property is the fact that the reactivity decreases down the group okay so reactivity so fluorine is the most reactive bromine is the least reactive melting and boiling point so fluorine is a gas bromine um, is not what are the two main properties of alkali metals Number one is they are very reactive. And number two is their reactivity increases down the group. Okay, so where we've got lithium, sodium, potassium, all of them are very reactive and the reactivity increases down the group based on what we were talking about before. Number 16, what is the name of group 1? They are the alkali metals. Group 7 is the halogens. Group 0 is the noble gases. Okay. Now the last part of this 
as again keywords. Right, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go through the keywords. The elements in group one of the periodic table are the alkali metals. The box is quite small. The smallest part of an atom right, that can exist, right, uh, all substances are made of atoms, there's a bit of a clue in there, right, is an atom. A positively charged object composed of protons and neutrons at the centre of every atom is the nucleus. The number of protons in the nucleus is the atomic number. Okay, so that's the little number. Question number five. A separation technique used to separate a mixture of chemicals by distributing the components between two phases. That is chromatography. Oops, Rafi. All right, so that is then where you've got your stationary phase and you've got your mobile phase. Stationary phase being the paper, mobile phase being the, the movement. Question number six. A substance made up of two or more types of atoms chemically combined. Chemically combined means compound. Number seven, a separation technique used to produce solid crystals from a solution by evaporating the solvent is crystallization. Number eight, a chemical reaction in which a more reactive element displaces less reactive element. That is displacement. Number nine, a negatively charged subatomic particle which orbit the nucleus at various energy levels. Electron. Number ten, different energy levels in atoms occupied by electrons. Shells. A substance made up of only one type of atom. Element. Number twelve, a separation technique used to separate solids from liquids. That has to be filtration. Be good if it was actually said insoluble solids. Number 13, a method of separating a mixture of substances based on different boiling points. Now it could be distillation. Now what distillation or simple distillation is where there's two. So this one is probably fractional distillation where there's lots, just like in separating crude oil. Fifteen, the element in group seven of the periodic table is the halogens. Number sixteen, an atom with an electric charge due to the loss or the gain of an electrons is an iron. So if it loses an electron, it becomes positive. If it gains an electron, it becomes negative. Number seventeen, atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Isotope. 18, the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is the mass number. Number 20, a mixture, sounds like a bit of a clue here, a mixture consists of two or more elements or compounds not chemically combined. Mixture. 21, a neutral subatomic particle present in the nucleus. Neutron. Positively charged subatomic particle. Proton, a procedure will buy two liquids with different boiling points that can be separated. So because it's two liquids, it's distillation. And then because there's two, it's simple.